What was that? It was the it was the thing. But I don't know where it went. All I heard was I can't I can't make that pop with your mouth. Don't it... fit. Just go. Don't I don't have it. Can't whistle, can't do that. That was a great <laughs> segment to show what we're showing today. Hello and welcome back to Two Girls Drink Beer. We are quarantined again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Today, Danielle, what are you drinking? So today I am very lucky because Nicholas did not drink all of the Guinness, so I will be drinking a Guinness. Nicholas, my boyfriend, drinks this mm-hmm. like it's water. He is a huge fan of the Guinness. So I have already promised him that if I cannot drink all of this, it's going to him. I don't know if you know this, but when you buy Guinness in a can, it has a little ball of nitrogen in it, if you hear it. Yeah. And also something you should know about Guinness is that you see how it's dark, but it's starting, can you see that it's starting to like fall? So you have to let it sit so that it's all one color. So I'm going to let that sit now before I start. Okay. I'm drinking Superbach again, Mm -hmm. but different this time so just as a refresher no pun intended but as you can see at the tippy top this is not the actual cap bottle yep. cap thank you you're welcome so this is a um, beer saver that's what they look like i have them in a bunch of different colors and i'm gonna my nails are trash like it's makeup <laughs> That's just like the tagline of this entire show it like it's makeup. So I'm drinking Super Back again. Um, but I want to do something different because this channel is very experimental and we're just trying to figure out what it is that we want and you want and all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to let this foam sit. Yes. I started drinking mine because it's settled. So what's the, what's the taste like before I go into this story? Honestly, I was not expecting it to taste like this. I've had Guinness before, but I've never actually, I mean, I've had like little sips here and there, but I've never actually like sat and drank it. And by the color, you expect this to be super, super heavy. This is not heavy at all. No, I like Guinness. Very minimal hops, which I like. Mm -hmm. Like it goes down so smoothly. Yeah, I remember the first time I had a Guinness um or tasted Guinness and I remember thinking to myself oh my god it's gonna be too much I can't handle it and I'm thinking to myself like it can't be more bitter than an IPA right for some reason I just had it in my head that this would be super bitter and it's not yeah when you judge a book by its cover you expect this to taste completely different than it actually is oh yeah and I was like totally intimidated by it but then I tasted it and I was like, oh, I could get, I could do this. This is a thing I can do. Yeah, it's not that bad. I like it. What's the smells? Hit all your bases, man. It smells like every bar I've been to in college. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't, I don't think it really smells like anything in particular. It just smells like beer. Why haven't I been ordering these? What, what, I feel like that's the thing. Like you, because, because they're, they, they do fill you up. They yeah. don't, they don't ta- initially taste heavy, but they do fill you up. So you, I, I don't think, I can't drink Guinness all night, but I could certainly have one or two. Listen, I have seen Nick put back a lot of Guinnesses. The alcohol content, 4.3%. Yeah, I knew it was low. So that's why, like, I'll drink, yeah, I've had River Horse Triple Horse, and that's 10%. 10%. They don't even put it in, like, a regular pint glass. They use the fancy. The beer wine glasses. I call them bind glasses because it's, like, beer mixed with wine. Mm -hmm. Bind. Or weir. They could be weir glasses. Yeah. So I was super intimidated by Guinness, and it's less than half of the alcohol percentage of the triple horse. So let me tell you about my super back and why I'm doing it again because this is different, right? So last week we put OJ in our IPA and today I was having lunch and I was like, I'm going to have a burger, right? And I told Danielle this, but it is a surprise to her because she didn't know I was doing it. (laughs) I just kind of did it. It's like Saturday night. That's it. I used my imagination. This was kind of like Saturday night live because what I did was live. 
and you found out, but like I didn't. I don't think that works. Where are you, where are you going with this? I don't. <laughs> I'm lost at sea. I was like, what happens if I put beer in my burger, right? I know a lot of times when you cook with alcohol, it burns that out, but you still get the flavor. Sorry, there was Let me tell you, I have pictures of it. I'll post them here and I will do a blog about it. But let me tell you that this was the juiciest burger I have ever made, ever. So here's what I did. I took two tablespoons of Superbox. That was it. I took four ounces of meat half a cup of meat. I put it in um, a bowl and then I put the two tablespoons in. I sprinkled some Himalaya salt. And then I was like, I need a, I need a kick in the pants here. Yeah. So I did rosemary. Rosemary is such an underrated spice. Also my grandmother is named. So I always, ma- I always put it in there in memory of her. Like every time I put rosemary in my sauce, I think of my grandmother. Point of that. But anyway, but rosemary, great, great flavor. I think so too. And I'm so sick of all this time nonsense. I, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of time. I'm really not a fan. What's your take on parsley and sage? Parsley, I, almost all the time I put parsley in my burger. I swapped out the parsley for rosemary this time. You know what I'm referencing, right? Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. The Simon and Garfunkel song. Anyway, moving on. Oh, that went, that went right, no, okay. that went right over my head. I'm so sorry. It's okay. You knew... After today, you should know not to throw a left ball, a, le- a curve, a left ball. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I just combined two baseball analogies. <laughs> so, curveball or coming out of left field. I don't know what's happening today, but something is for sure. <laughs> it's a day. So, to bind, um, I use almond flour. So I use maybe like two tea, one to two teaspoons of almond flour for a burger that size. And I mash it and I mash it and I mash it together with my hands. I wash them first, like a giant meatball. And then I pat it down, pop it on the grill, four minutes on one side, four minutes on the other, medium to high flame. My burgers are rare. So if you like yours cooked a little bit more, might I recommend cooking it a little bit more and also putting a lid on it to let the steam come through. But I like a cool red center. The outside was, you know, it had like that perfect, like kind of like hard crust piece. And then the inside, oh my God, was so juicy. And I probably could have put more beer in it, but it was like the, I got hit with the salt. Then I got hit with the rosemary and then I got the lingering taste of lager. Ah, interesting. Yeah. It was really good. Like the next time you come over, I will make them for you. Question for you. Yeah. Your chopped meat, like meat to fat ratio, what were you at? It might have been closer to 80 20. 80 20? Okay. Yeah. So you're using a fattier meat, but added in the beer. Yeah. And I've been on this like burger salad kick. I make salad with, um, I think I put pineapple in it, mostly veggies. And for dressing, I use balsamic vinegar, but to complement the burger, I had rosemary olive oil. Ah, very nice. I think if I made it again, I would put more beer in it. But it was originally inspired by this place I went to when I visited Savannah. Um, my friend and I did a road trip to Savannah, and we went to this brewing company down there. And they had a flight. Now, from Jersey, flights are like a double shot glass, yeah. right? You don't get a lot of beer in a flight. It's like no. teeny tiny, right? It's a taste. It's a little nip. These were half pint glasses. Like, and there were nine of them. Oh, wow. The thing was like this big, bigger than like I could fit in the camera. And it came to the table. It was like, bada boom. And I was like, (laughs) and I didn't think about it, right? Liz, if you're listening, oh, she's probably dying. I I was like, we'll get our own. Liz was like, you don't want to. I was like, nah, we're good. We'll get our own. And then it came to the table, these two giant, like, trees because you know the wood thing that they put the and I looked at it and I was like I severely underestimated what this was you did it's like when we were in um Burlington and we went to the magic hat what was it the tasting room we got a charcuterie board and we got a flight but those flights were tiny they were like your typical flights this was nothing there was nothing tiny about this (laughs) and so one of the beers was um I think it, it was either a lager or an ale, I can't remember, but it was rosemary. And you got hit with that rosemary in the beer. And I was like, this is amazing. And Liz didn't like it. So I drank hers. So I really had 10 
Oh gosh. Of them. Yes. So much beer. I was in heaven. But I thought about that and I thought about what would go well with beer. <clears throat> so that's why I did the rosemary and the beer in the burger. It mm. was delicious. Now, this beer that I am drinking. So hungry. Now I want a burger. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sorry. Continue. This beer that I had had this little guy on it, this little, uh, they're called beer savers. So I put this on the beer. And if you, I mean, I don't really, this sounds terrible, but I always finish my beer. Mm -hmm. But now when I cook with my beer, I know that I could put a cap on it and save the rest of it to drink for later. So I had um, my food at about... I think I cooked at 11:45, mm -hmm. and we—it's about 3:30 now. So this beer, hours later, is still very carbonated. Yeah. However, you have to be careful, because as we saw, this just kind of. We heard. Yeah, as you heard, you didn't see it. So, I I went to take it out of the fridge, and my mom was like. I put the I put the cap back on. I was like, "What are you talking about?" I put the cap on. She's like, "I don't know. It ended up on the shelf." So <laughs> that explains it. I while it works and it kept it carbonated, I think maybe the issue is there's too much carbonation, and it just <laughs> like champagne bottle at midnight. Yeah, but it kept it carbonated and it's still really good. We have an episode already released. <laughs> So we are talking about the farewell. We'll do a whole thing on that. Check yep. it out. We're available on all the platforms. Send yeah. us an email. Mm -hmm. Reach out to us. DM us on Twitter, on Instagram. We'll put all this stuff in the video and or in the comments section. If you have beer suggestions, we have a list running. I am so excited to run this YouTube channel post-quarantine and drink all of the beers. But until then, Danielle and I are going to have to do our best to get whatever we can. We're going we're gonna to get them all. Got to catch them all. Yes. Maybe we'll find a holographic Charizard in oh, one of the beers. The equivalent to that in beer is the dogfish head. Is it the 120? Yes. Extremely difficult to find. Also extremely expensive. You saying dogfish reminded me that there is a hotel in Delaware, the Dogfish Inn, where you can yeah, stay. Yeah, it's all connected. It's on the website. So Danielle and I are going to book our vacation now. And we hope that you all have a wonderful week. Drink you your beers. Say your prayers. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. <laughs> Bye, guys. Take care. See you next week. Cheers. We didn't cheers. Ah, oh, cheers. Sal sal salud. Salud.